So here we are on my Nvidia Shield Pro and we can just confirm there that it is running the latest version of the software. But watch what happens when I press the home key, one press, and we are now inside the all new Google TV launcher running on my Nvidia Shield Pro. So this is the new Google TV launcher, which is going to be a standard across all of the new Google TV devices. And I believe the first device that actually has this as a default launcher is the new Google Chromecast, uh, codename Sabrina. But I believe that Google will actually push this to all Android TV devices in the near future. And we can just see guys, it has a completely different layout to what we're used to. And we can just see the main thing with this launcher is all about aggregating your content. So whichever services you're subscribed to, wherever you get your content from, this launcher will basically bring all of that together onto your home screen. Here we see some of the trending content. I can go to the top and see movies, shows and all that stuff. So in this video today, let me show you how you can also get the new Google TV launcher on your Nvidia Shield or really any recent Android TV device. All you need to do is just hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so to begin this process on your device, the first thing you need to do is go over to your settings, go into device preferences, click on about, scroll down, and where it says the build number, you want to press the select button here seven times. And this is because we want to enable the developer option. So let's do that now. And keep pressing it until you get the message that you are now a developer. Once you see that message, let's press the back button on the remote. Let's scroll down. And we now have a new menu called developer options. And I will say just as a word of warning, if you don't know what you're doing, then do not mess about with the settings in here because it could really have an adverse effect on your device. Let's scroll down. And the thing we're looking for in here is where it says network debugging and just make sure that option is enabled. Once you've done that, let's now press the home key. And we're now going to use the application downloader, which is available from the standard Play Store. Let's open that up. And where it says the search term, let's click on that and just type in TDUK and click on go. This will then do a search query for those four letters and we should be able to find my website. Normally it's the first link or the second link. Now, if you get any kind of errors that your browsing is not supported on Android TV, there is a very easy fix for that. And I will leave a link in the video description on how you can do that. I guess let's go for the first link over here and this will take you straight to my website. And when you get to my site, you want to head over to the hamburger menu, click on the three lines and then click on tutorials. And the latest tutorial in the list will be how you can use the new Google TV launcher on your Android TV device. So let's open that up. And here's that tutorial. Let's scroll down. And here we just have the step-by-step -step instructions if you prefer to read. But if you just want the applications, let's keep going down. Now there's the one and only command that you will have to enter in to disable your stock launcher so we can use the new Google TV launcher. But I will show you that in just a second. Let's keep going down. And here are the three applications that we need, guys. So the first one is the new Google TV launcher. The second one has a fix to the search functionality because if you just install the launcher by itself, unfortunately, the search part doesn't work properly. But if you install this after it, that fixes that issue. And then lastly, we have my favorite remote ADB show, which we can use to make ADB connections onto our device and then enter in those commands. Let's get the first one. Let's click on that, scroll down, and then click on the green download button. Let's give that a second, click on install once that's done. And we can see that the new Google Home is actually called Launcher X. Gets back out of that. So install the first one, then go back, then install the Google TV search fix. And lastly, install the remote ADB shell. Once all three applications are installed, let's now press the home key. And let's now start remote ADB shell. Now you notice that you can't actually see remote ADB shell on the home screen. So the way we access that application is by using another application called the Sido Launcher, which is a free application and it is available on the standard Google Play Store. So let's open that up. And this will show you all of your third party or your side loaded applications. 
Let's go down and here we have remote ADB shell. Let's click on that. Let's leave the IP as 127.0.0.1 because we are making a connection to ourselves. And let's now click on next. Next again, and let's click on connect. Now, the first time you do this, you may see an ADB authorization prompt. If you do get that, just click on always allow this connection and click on OK. OK, so now that we've made the ADB connection, we now need to type in that single command to disable the stock launcher. As soon as the stock launcher is disabled, the next time you press the home key, it will then launch any other launcher that you have installed. And in our example, we've installed the Google TV launcher. Now, the easiest way to enter in that single command is to use the Shield TV application on your cell phone, or you can even use the official Android TV application. Now, both these applications are available for iOS and also for Android, and they'll allow you to copy and paste commands directly to your device. So let me now open that up on my Android device. Let's click on Shield TV. Now, when you start the application, the first thing it shows you is all of the applications installed on your Shield. But if you look on the bottom left, we can see we have option for remote. Let's click on that. We now get a trackpad and I can also click on the keyboard icon on the top right. So let me do that now. So I now see a keyboard on my phone. So now anything I type in, we can see it gets sent straight to the screen. So you can now just type in the command if you like, or if you want to make it even easier, you can now open up my website on your cell phone and just copy and paste that command. So let me do that now. Here is that same tutorial. I can now just scroll down. Here's the command there. I can now just press and hold with my finger. I can make sure all of the command is selected. So the command starts PM uninstall. And let's scroll to the right. And it ends as google.android.tv launcher. Once you have all of the commands selected, let's just click on copy. Let's go back to our Shield app. I can now click on the keyboard again. And just with one click, I can now paste all of that command directly to the screen. As we can see, it's done exactly that. Once that's done, I can now press Enter. And as soon as you see that success message, that means now the stock launcher has actually been disabled. So all I need to do now is I can now put down my phone. I can now press the home key on my remote. And I'm hoping we should see that menu there. So that menu is now asking you which application do you want to use as your home launcher or as your default launcher. And because new application is called home, I can select that and just select the option always, which basically means every time I press the home key now, it will always boot up or start this custom launcher. And the first time you do start it, it does take a couple of seconds because it is aggregating all of the sources or all of the services that you are subscribed to. And it will then show you all of the content that you can actually watch. Okay, and this is the new launcher, guys. So in fact, let's just test the search feature because if you don't install that second application, when you click here, it will actually crash. But here, for example, we can see it's actually working absolutely fine. I can say this command here. I can click on that. This should then aggregate which services I've got, which are free, and then show me some content. And we can see we have uh, one thing there. Okay, let's back out of that. So the search is working fine. Let's press the home key. So the for you section is all about those recommendations. So it'll look at all of the services that you are subscribed to. And then based on that, it'll recommend content. Then over time, it'll actually understand the stuff that you do regularly watch and then recommend content based on that. So for example, we have some things from uh, this channel over here. And if I click on something, I have the option to watch that now. But for example, I can go to three ways to watch. And this then shows me other ways I can watch this particular episode or show. Okay, let's back out of that. And if I've already seen it, I can click on that just so it knows that I've already seen it. And I can also then give it a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, which will then help it recommend similar content or not recommend similar content in the future. And here, for example, we can see if you like that particular show, it then recommends other shows like that. Some of them are paid, obviously, um, and some of them are through the free streaming services. Okay, let's back out of that. So that's the For You section. Then you have a dedicated section for movies. Here you have some popular content, uh, new content, uh, what's currently trending on Google, and then some of the other genres, like you have action films, you have Oscar-winning films, sci-fi, and so on and so forth, uh, comedies. Let's go back to the top. So that's the movies. Then you have a show section and apps is your normal applications. Now, I really prefer this app library compared to the standard Android TV library. So we can see your applications here. 
You can see the app categories. So I can say, for example, show me some tools. I can click on that. And this then shows me popular applications in that particular category. Okay, let's back out of that. And for example, something that's already installed. If I press and hold on that, I now get the option to open it. I can rearrange that on the home screen. I can also go to view details. And this will then give me the option to uninstall it, or I can even update that directly from here. So in fact, let's see if that's actually working. Just to confirm that we can actually get updates for our applications when we are using this custom Google TV launcher. And we can see that's working absolutely fine. In fact, I can click on open and that's working absolutely fine. Really good screensaver. Okay, let's back out of that. And the last section you have here is for libraries. So as we can see here, any content that you previously purchased or rented from Google, all of that content will appear here and it'll then allow you to access that and watch that. But as we can see with my account, I haven't purchased anything. Now, one key thing that's missing here is the fact that I cannot see any content from my Plex library. So I have lots of my movies and TV shows and other content published through Plex. But unfortunately, this launcher doesn't actually aggregate that content. It really does seem to be more focused on the subscription or paid content. But maybe that's something that they will address in a future release. OK, let's press the home key again. And the other great thing with this process is you still get to keep the recents menu. So if I double tap the home key, that does actually bring up the recent. So I can navigate to my recent applications. Now, what's not working? So one of the things that is not working properly is on the home screen under for you. If I scroll down, there's actually a section here which says uh, improve the recommendations or get better recommendations. But unfortunately, when you click on that, it just seems to crash the launcher. So when you press the home key again, it actually asks you once again, what do you want to use as your uh, stock launcher? And let's do always again. So that says one thing that's not working properly. I'm sure when you use a device, so that says one thing that's not working properly, but I'm sure if you use this more and more, you probably will discover other bugs with it. Okay, so how do we now go back to the stock launcher? Well, very easy. If you go back to remote ADB shell, let me now double tap the home key. Let's go back to remote ADB shell. Now, let me just take this opportunity to say a massive thanks to all of the new members of my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I'm doing a special promotion for the first 100 members whereby all of you can join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can even share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get early access to them. So if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for the join button. Thank you. And once again, the command is written on my website on how you can restore the stock launcher. And I've actually typed it in already. So any command that you type into remote ADB shell, if you press the down arrow, so the last line is highlighted, you can now press the select button. And this then shows you all of the previous commands that you've typed in. So, so it really makes this process very easy to do and undo using a different launcher. So I can now type in this command. So that's the command you want to use to restore your stock launcher. Let's click on run. And we get the message that that launcher is now installed again for user zero. I can now press the home key and we're back to the stock launcher. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. If you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.